Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Drodis, Bible teacher and preacher, and you are watching Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. Today I want to talk about some important people that we read about in the book of Revelation during the final seven years, the seven-year tribulation period, or as I like to say, Daniel's 70th week. The first people that I want to talk to you about, I've always been really interested in them, is the two witnesses. And they're found in Revelation chapter 11. So let's go to Revelation chapter 11 and learn a little bit more about these two witnesses. Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. Now the thing when we study the book of Revelation or Daniel, there's a lot of uh, different references to the same thing. 1,260 days is three and a half years. Um, the tribulation period is seven year period. There are two halves to the tribulation period of three and a half years each. Um, the term times, time, times, and half a time refers to three and a half years. 42 months refers to three and a half years. So we'll see all of these interchanging as we read the book of Revelation. Verse 4, these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. That's what these two prophets have the power to do. These two witnesses have a ministry to prophesy. They have a ministry to, to expose the Antichrist as who he really is. They, have, they, they are given power to shut up the heavens, power to turn water into blood, power to strike the earth with plagues. Who are these people? On the Mount of Transfiguration, we see that Jesus met with two individuals, Moses and Elijah. And he was talking to them about, about his death. Elijah has power to shut off the heavens from rain. Moses had the power to turn water to blood. And Moses had the power to bring plagues upon the Egyptians. I'm just speculating that maybe these two witnesses are Moses and Elijah. When Moses died, his body was never found. Elijah was carried away in a chariot of fire. Jude talks about a dispute between Michael and Satan over the body of Moses. Second Kings tells us a, a very interesting story about, about Elijah. When he was walking uh, to town, there was a group of 42 boys that began to harass him and taunt him and call him names. And suddenly, as, as they were doing this, two bears came out from the woods and mauled the 42 uh, young boys. You may be saying, what does that have to do with what you're talking about? Isn't it interesting? Nothing in the Bible is there by accident. Why was it 42 children, young boys? Why was it two bears? I propose that Moses and Elijah will maul the Antichrist for 42 months constantly um, uh, correcting him, constantly being critical of him, constantly prophesying against the Antichrist, constantly telling the world that he's a false Christ. He's not the one that they think he is. And he will, they will be a thorn in his flesh. And the Antichrist will not be able to kill them. Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. Finally, after the 42 months, we read in Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them and overcome them, and he will kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into the grave. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. The beast will finally kill these two prophets, 
The beast will kill them after 42 months. He'll leave their bodies lie out in the street of Jerusalem for three and a half days. It says here that the, 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 the world will make merry. They'll send gifts to one another. It's almost like a demonic Christmas is occurring when these two uh, great men of God are killed by the beast. Then in verse 11, Now after three and a half days, the breath of life from God enters them, and they stood up on their feet, and great fear fell on all those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. They're resurrected. These, these two witnesses, when their ministry is, fu- is finished, will be resurrected, and they will be taken up to heaven. The second group of people that I, I'm interested in is the 144,000. They're found in Revelation chapter 7. There's 144,000 Jewish men, 12,000 from each tribe. Um, they're sealed by God. These are Jewish evangelists. They come onto the scene very early in, in, the, in the tribulation period. They're in Revelation 7. They're already being sealed uh, by God, and they are going forward all over the world, preaching and teaching and evangelizing that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Um, they're also in Revelation 9. It appears that these guys are... are Uh, throughout the entire seven-year tribulation period up until the very end of the tribulation period. In Revelation 9, they're there at the fifth trumpet judgment. Um, Revelation 9, verse 4, They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. I'm talking about uh, the fifth trumpet judgment, these locusts from the bottomless pit that sting like scorpions and torment men for five months. And, and men would wish that they could die from this great tormenting, but they could, could not even die. But they, they these evil demonic locusts are not allowed to touch the 144,000 sealed of God. And, and so these guys are supernaturally protected. Then in Revelation 14, we read again about the 144,000 with the Lamb of God. They're, all, they're there throughout the tribulation period, reaching the Jews with the gospel, reaching the Jews that Jesus is the true Messiah. Now let's look at the evil side of things, the two beasts. Revelation chapter 13 There are two beasts that we've talked about before. In Revelation 13, the beast from the sea. Then I stood on the sand of the sea and saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, his mouth like the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? This beast that comes out of the sea, this this sea monster, this beast that comes out of the sea, comes out from the sea of mankind. His power is, is given to him from Satan himself. At first, this man, this Antichrist, will look pretty good. The world will see him come onto the scene when he brokers or ratifies a peace treaty uh, called the uh, Treaty of Peace and Security, or as Daniel calls it, the covenant with the many. He will come on the scene, and he will seem to have answers to all the problems that the world is experiencing. And he will draw many followers to him. And he and, and Israel will... Uh, Look at him as a friend of Israel because he brought peace to the land. Um, Sometime during this guy's ministry, he will be mortally wounded in in the head. He will experience a head wound. Um, He either will live miraculously live or he will be resurrected. But this guy is pure evil. Verse 6 tells us, Then he opened his mouth, and he blasphemed against God. He blasphemed his name. He blasphemes his tabernacle, and he blasphemes those who live in heaven. He was given power um, to make war on the saints, and he blasphemes God. 
Next, he's also given a, a, a friend in verse 5. And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. This Antichrist, this beast from the sea, is given a mouthpiece, a friend. And we'll read about him as the beast from the earth. He's, he's given authority for 42 months. So it appears that sometime in the middle of the tribulation period, this mouthpiece, this false prophet that we're going to read about in just a minute, is, is comes onto the scene. And he's called the beast from the earth. Then uh, Revelation 13, 11. Then I saw another beast coming up from the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell on in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he is granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded with the sword and lived. This beast from the earth will be a religious individual. Uh, it possibly he'll come from Israel itself or Judea. He will, will pre perform great signs. He'll deceive those who dwell on the earth. He will, he will cause people to worship the first beast. He will be the mouthpiece for the first beast. He will be a false prophet. He will look religious, but he will be a deceiver, just the same as the first beast. Verse 15, he is also granted power to give breath to an image of the beast, that an image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as he would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. This false prophet then comes up with an evil idea to, to develop a, a, an image of the, the beast. And people will worship the image, breaking the second commandment. Breaking the commandment, thou shalt have no graven images before me, says the Lord. And he will make this image of the beast. And he will demand that people all over the world worship this image of the beast. And if they don't, they will be killed. And then verse 16 he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And here we have the mark of the beast being introduced by this false prophet. I had a dream a few few weeks ago and I shared it, but the Lord is giving me more insight into this dream. And often he does that when I get a spiritual dream from the Lord. In the, in the initial dream, I had a bird's eye view of a city. It, it could have been an American city or it could have been any city anywhere, but it had big buildings and had little buildings. It had cars, it had people. It had everything that these major cities have. But as I was watching from the bird's eye view, I saw at first a small snake slithering through the st streets. Then they got very, very large. And they were so large that they were la larger than trucks. And they were dark black snakes slithering through the streets or like eels slithering through the streets. And then they would burrow underneath the city and make these huge caverns or these huge holes where they would go in underneath the foundation of the city. Then I saw, as I described before, it looked like a gorilla or a monkey, but it walked more like a man. And it was ferocious and had a very uh, frightening looking face with fangs and, and, and big arms. And this, this demonic monkey was working with the uh, evil eels as or demonic snakes as they burrowed under the city. And then I watched the entire city collapse. I'm, I'm really thinking now that I had a vision of the end of days when the beast of the earth and the beast of the sea uh, join league together and, and cause chaos and destruction upon the face of the earth. The good news about all this is we win. We win. There's no reason to be afraid of the future. We win. The good news is we win. We some of us will either die before this happens, and Paul says to uh, depart from the body is to be present with the Lord. Um, some of us will go when the rapture comes, that trumpet blast will sound, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who remain will go up in the rapture, and some may even be martyred for Christ. But the good news is we spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, the only way you lose out 
is if you reject Jesus Christ. And that's why we do these videos, to encourage people, draw closer to God, give your heart to Jesus today. Today is the day of salvation. How do I get saved? You may be saying, it's simple as ABC. A, admit you're a sinner and you need a savior. In other words, you can't save yourself by even if you were to, uh, did good works, you cannot do enough good works to save yourself. You need a savior. B, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that Jesus is exactly who he says he is, the son of God and the savior of the world. And C, confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior. If you do these things, um, you will be born again and you will be on your way to heaven. And as, as the days approach, as we see more and more evil happening, you can rest assured that one day you will be with the Lord in eternity. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for watching. If you haven't liked or subscribed, please do so. Um, thank you for your comments and prayers. And until next time, I will talk to you again as we continue to solve the prophetic puzzle. God bless you.